Hey, Data Skeptic listeners, thanks to those of you who participated in our listener survey a little while back. Linda and I have been going over the results, and we decided to jump on the mics and record some of our thoughts and feedback that this might be an interesting behind-the-scenes kind of component, but also a little view into what we're going to do with that information, and I at least drop a few interesting anecdotes in there about survey design and whatnot. So, hope you guys enjoy this. Next week, I'm going to be doing a solo episode all about fraud detection. And the week after that, we'll start our new season. I'll tell you more about that coming up. For now, here's Linda and I working through our survey. So how have you been, Linda? Hanging in there, working from home. Love working from home, but with COVID, it does make other things hard. For sure. So I ask you here today to discuss the details of the findings of our listener survey. Ooh, survey. First of all, let's remind people what was the user survey in case they missed it. Well, we set on air. We just wanted to know more about our listeners and who they are. So we just enticed everyone to take their survey, and we did give out some free t-shirts to a few select winners, so it was all very exciting. And let's get into some of the high-level details. So for this survey, how did people take it? Well, they clicked on a link, and then they filled out a Google survey. So what's the first thing we learned about our listeners? So basically what Cal and I are doing are just scrolling through the results. The first is... I don't know if I'm surprised or not surprised, but of the people, we had 145 responses. And so of those, 87% said they are male, and the remaining 13% said they are female. And no one declined to answer or gave another answer. We had prefer not to answer as the third one. But broadly speaking, uh, I think the technical term is sausage fest. Yeah, I don't like to use that. So basically, there's way more male listeners than female listeners. Why, Linda, do you suppose that is? Well, actually, I was just going to say, I think in data science in general, there's just more men. I'm glad you pointed that out because that is true. I mean, broadly speaking, even more than that in STEM, we see less women going into STEM fields, which is disappointing. Yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of a technical show. So, you know, if people aren't interested in the topic, maybe they don't want to listen. Could be one theory. So if our averages match the presumed average of the audience, then what are you going to do? Well, let's dive into age. The most 34% of our listeners are between 23 and 30 years of age. 35% are between 31 to 40. And 12% between 41 to 50. It looks like 5% are between 51 to 60. And a 3.4% are 61 and above. No real surprises here. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what the exact uh, ratio of what the population is. I don't know if we're over or under indexing on some. Oh, compared to the population, we don't match at all because we start at 18 and we end at 61 and above. So technically we don't end. But no, this doesn't fit that at all. Maybe if you said, what does it compare to the podcast listening audience? Maybe we're not too far off from that. Again, selection bias, sampling and stuff to be considered. Yeah, well, also that makes me realize, like, you could be under 18 and listening to the podcast, but there wasn't an answer for you. Yeah, send me an email if you are. I want to know what teenagers are getting into Data Skeptic. So, apologize. We didn't even have an answer for you. All right, well, let's move along. <laughs> Marital status. Hopefully the young people are single. So, the number one is 53% are married and 44% never married. So, that's the most breakout. That's the most surprising thing about this. The most surprising thing to me is that we have so little divorced or separated. Data skeptics good for your marriage, I guess. Oh, yeah, you're right. That is weird because the population of divorced people. But we also have the people, I think the then question is of people who get divorced, what age are they? True. Maybe it's tied up in the divorce that they just stopped listening to, so they didn't uh, end up filling this out. Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Ethnicity. This is of people who identify. The number one is 72% identify as Caucasian, 10% 
identify as Asian, so pretty pretty high, but may be reflective of the amount of Asians potentially in the STEM fields, which probably over-indexes there. Yes, indeed, compared to population. 6% represent for the Hispanic that's good. I'd like to see that higher, given that there's a lot of, I think we under-indexed compared to the U.S. population in that regard. Well, obviously African-American, too. Oh, yeah. Let's see what that percentage is. It says people who identify as black, 0.7%. So we could try to appeal to more of a diverse segment. I don't know how. Yes, obviously that's a goal. But let's also be careful with what we do with these statistics, because that's certainly one person, I think. And so we just in, inadvertently revealed our number of respondents. Or oh, you already said that. When you only have one person, I mean, obviously the answer is not zero because there's the one person. But it's there's a big margin of error around that particular measurement because we don't have enough samples to have measured an infrequent event enough. So it could be much higher but it's still a small piece. And yes, of course, we'd like it to grow larger. But this is a problem I used to have when I do survey work. People would say, how many respondents do you need to receive statistical significance? And I, for some reason, could never explain to people that that was totally missing the point. Statistical significance depends on the outcome. I can tell you that a coin is 50-50 pretty quick, but a dye that only comes up green one in a million times, it takes a lot longer to establish that. But anyway. Yes, we under-index. Back to the bigger question you had. How do we appeal broader? What do you think? Well, I don't know. I think we should probably cut into the data about like ethnicity among STEM and data science to see whether we're over or under-indexing, first of all. I don't think we're going to change the industry, but we can see what we can do in our own court. And so I think that's what it True. We need to figure out. But I don't know. There's not an answer. Yeah. And I don't, that's not the point of this. The point is just to talk about this. That's a good point. Well, then let's move along. What's next? Let's see now. Education. 40% have a master's degree. 18% have a four-year college. 16% some grad school and or advanced degree. 15% doctoral degree. So I feel like that's pretty high compared to the population, but I will say the podcast is pretty technical from my stance. So that makes sense. Not surprised. Yeah. Go into annual household income. 24% make more than 150K. 21% are between 100 to 49K. 16% are between 75K to 19K. Another 16% under 25K, which I would probably hope that they're probably students. <laughs> and then let's see, 22% are 50K to 74K. So, I mean, I feel like the high income listeners probably reflected by their uh, education level completed as income tends to go up with their education. This does seem related. Let's see now. Hey, you want another just side note about the under 25K thing? Um, I wouldn't say this invalidates our results, but another issue a lot of people commonly have in surveys is you put it, you don't localize it. So we put American currencies and we obviously had people from other countries. Did they take the time to convert their income to American money? I don't know. Uh, they probably just put a random thing. And in particular, I think it's in India where by a strange trick of like the decimal places, people's monthly salaries somehow lines up with our annuals. Um, so they'll frequently answer the American scale, but in an Indian way. It's very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how many listeners, I don't know if we have a breakdown by geography, so we probably won't be able to know. Next time. All right. But yeah, uh, income definitely outperforming the national averages, but that's just to be assumed in a way. Well, employment status. 63% are in the technology. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> and then the rest, 20%. The second biggest segment are students or recent grads. I'm glad. And then let's see, you know, at the time, just to be clear, this is pre-COVID, there were 3.4% who were identified as unemployed. So I'm sure that number might have changed today. <laughs> okay. How long have you been a listener? 31% said less than six months. So there's a lot of new newbie listeners out there. The next highest, 25%, said between one to two years. 17% said between two and three years. 19% said between seven months to 12 months. Yeah. And then 12% said more than three years. So that was 18 people. So just have to give a shout out to our hardcore listeners. 
Let's see now. How frequently do you listen? 52% said weekly, 29% said monthly, and then 14% said several times a year. <laughs> so maybe some people might listen into bursts, you know, might or just might be like, oh yeah, I forgot to listen, and then just tune in every once in a while. <laughs> Thank you guys for sticking with us. Well, they must like you enough, so they must be a fan in some way because they probably wanted that t-shirt. Or they just wanted you to know they don't listen that often. Or you know what I do with a lot? There's like I have kind of like a B-list of shows that I don't listen to all of them, but I go based on topic. A lot of like developer stuff. It'll be like, hey, here's a show on Ruby. And I'm like, well, I don't do Ruby. But the next week it'll be about React, and I do do React, so I'll listen to that. Um, so maybe people enjoy the show that way. At least one person put, rarely... <laughs> So they rarely listen, but we're generous enough with their time to take our survey. See, what we didn't ask was, um, there's something about, okay, frequently, does that mean, I think you were alluding to this, that they sat down and every you know time the show comes out and listen to it, that's weekly? Or when you say monthly, does that mean you go into like little binge fest? Because my own experience, there's a couple of shows I let build up and then I'll listen to three or four in a day. Maybe that's what they mean. Who yeah, knows? we don't know. That might be a good question <laughs> if... We can get people to answer the next survey. <laughs> okay, where do you listen to your podcast? And this is pre-COVID. A whopping 52% said driving and or commuting, which, I mean, I haven't looked at the industry standard, but I think that's pretty in line with the podcast. And then let's see, 27% you know, said at home, which, I mean, that could mean anything. They could be working from home. They could be cleaning. They could... <laughs> just be doing something at home. So, I mean, this is not surprising, but good to know data. Oh, here we get to the point. How much of each episode do you listen to? And 97%, that's crazy, said the entire episode. So when they do listen, they listen to the entire episode. Honestly, I'm not surprised. I'm going to pat myself on the back here. We work hard to keep the show like clean and shortcut. I listen to some shows where they start out with like 10 minutes of fluff and then five minutes of ads. And like, of course you skip ahead. We're trying to always keep the show pretty trim and, and moving. Well, there we go. Good job. I think, yeah, I'm going to take this as a win. Okay. How many other podcasts do you listen to? So there are diehard podcast listeners with 50% saying six or more podcasts. 24% said between four to five podcasts. 22% said I listened to two to three podcasts. And five people said they listened to one. And it's, and it's this one. <laughs> so, I mean, first of all, those five people, if we're the only one, that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Clearly, I don't know if this is in line with the general podcast audience, but, you know, people seem to be diehard podcast listeners, I think, is what I'm gathering. Why do you think I do a podcast? These are my people. Kyle feels very strongly a podcast listener. About audio input, yes. That, that's his feeling. And for you listeners out there, Kyle actually falls asleep listening to a podcast or old-time radio shows. So. Yeah. I've been on a shadow binge recently. Yeah, so he, he basically eats, sleeps, and breathes podcasts, just in case you guys didn't know that. <laughs> okay, what's your main goal for listening? Okay, let's get to the meat of this. Stay educated or informed. Love it. Best top answer. That's 47% said that. The next highest is their interest in data science. The third highest is career development. So people are out there trying to get better. No surprise there, but I guess we can say that the big value prop of Data Skeptic is to educate people, you know? And I think, yeah, keep people abreast of new stuff. Like I try and cover pretty timely things. I'm not always bleeding edge, but, you know, the fields are evolving quickly and uh, I do my best to keep up with them and share that stuff with the listeners. Well, that's a good point. You know, maybe next time we should have a survey question like how relevant and newsworthy or, you know, bleeding edge is are the topics that you hear to see if they actually reciprocate that. Hey, that's a great question. Let's add that. Yeah. What's the lag of data skeptic? Yeah. I mean, some lag is good, though. I want to cover old stuff, too. We should we should ask them what they think. That's what you say. Yeah. We don't know what they're saying. <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. If you guys have a comment, please email us. What's the best email for them to email us if they have comments? They should email, how about listener feedback at dataskeptic.com? All right. 
Okay. How did you hear about the podcast? The number one answer with 37%. They discovered it on iTunes, Spotify, or some other podcast platform. So yeah, you guys just stumbled upon us. 21% said you you have no idea. <laughs> 12% said social media, so somehow some people are on it. 8% said a friend or a colleague. And then people actually, in this answer, overwhelmingly wrote in their own answer. Oh, good. Well, give me some anecdotes without, you know, revealing anyone's anonymity. Someone said, on Reddit, on a web search, on an old website of stats and machine learning, an internet search, a Google search of data science podcasts. An internet article. Someone met Kyle at a talk. So Kyle, you you literally did were the word of mouth. <laughs> All right. Someone mentioned it on General Assembly, a courseware or Coursera course, a Python course. So yeah, Kyle seems very uh, hot in the learning oriented. So yeah, that that's great that people literally passing it word of mouth. I'm glad to hear it. That's what we really aim for in a lot of ways. I would say that's something that's strong and you actually spend a lot of time doing that, like building a network and also volunteering time. I haven't been to any conference in months. That's not true. I did some online things. Yeah. So Kyle, I, what I've witnessed is Kyle definitely spends a lot of time in the community. So that makes sense. How trustworthy. Now I'm worried about this next question. So how trustworthy do you perceive data skeptic? 80% 80% said very, 16% said relatively, and Kyle, I'm sorry, but four four people or 3% said neutral or no opinion. Fair enough. We got no <laughs> not trustworthy. I'm disappointed. Well, no one said not trustworthy, though. They said neutral. That means I'm preaching to the choir. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they just haven't thought about it. They haven't come to a conclusion yet. <laughs> I need to get some people who rage listen. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, it sounds like they believe you. I would probably theorize if they didn't believe you, they probably would stop listening or they have a different motivation for listening. Linda, this is our untapped market. The other areas we filled up, we have all the very trustworthy people. We need to find the people who don't trust us to keep growing. (laughs) I don't know if that's a great use of our time and energy, but, you know, I just wanted to summarize. So, Kyle, what do you think of all this? What, all the data you've learned on our, our listeners, what did you think was the most surprising? I, you know, I don't know that anything jumps out as surprising. There were a couple like, you know, frequencies that were higher than I expected, like 54% of people. I'm looking at an older version, but the majority of people said driving and or in commute. More than 50% said that. Obviously, that's a big group, but I would have said that's 25% and, and we would have seen a more even distribution. Which also, because now we really need to resurvey because I presume less people are commuting, but our numbers haven't terribly shifted downward because of that. So it's not like people stop listening. They're listening somewhere else. For me, the most surprising is uh, how diehard they seem about podcasts. And 97% said they listen to the full episode, you know, so that, you know, I do ad sales. So by the way, shout out if anyone wants to sponsor our podcast, we have inventory available. So. So please free, feel free to email us advertising at dataskeptic.com. So if you guys want to sponsor our show, we actually have a lot of available inventory. And with the economy taking a dive, we definitely need it. <laughs> but the point that I think is interesting. So when I do ad sales is to help, you know, tell them that 97% of listeners surveyed said they listened to the full episode. So that that means when we sell the pre-roll or mid-roll or post-roll, the listeners are probably going to hear it no matter what placement. Uh, well, now I have to ask an important data science question. Could it be that the reason 97% of people said they listened to the end is you only announced the survey at the very end of the show? Well, that's a good question. Where Where did we announce it? <laughs> I believe it was right after my intro, right after the cold open. Mm. So at the beginning. So at the beginning. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. for me, I would theorize it's best to be either a pre-roll or a mid-roll placement, whereas a post-roll, I suspect if there's an ad at the end, people would probably think they heard the end of the episode and they would answer it like they heard the whole thing. I think people underestimate the potential for a post-roll because – you're right. Some people are like, oh, the show's over. I'm about to turn this off. But that's where maybe we'd be a bit more flexible. Like, hey, if you're a SQL Server user, wait till the end. Well, yeah, most people are turning that off. But I have a lot of SQL Server users. And, you know, the ones that 
will hear that will want to hear the ad. So it's a potentially good way to target stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I will say when I listen to podcasts, I'm usually doing something. So even though it's the end of the show and there's another ad or credits, I still hear it just because my hands are busy and I don't have time to like literally run over and stop it at the exact 30 second mark. Yeah, Linda, this is not a sales call. You don't need to push it. I'm just saying that like for me, I definitely listen to the full thing. So a uh, survey of one. It depends on the show. Yeah. Some shows uh, put a lot of junk at the end. I skip that. All right. Well, we're going to definitely need to do another one of these listener surveys, I think. So maybe every time we switch over the season, we should start talking about the next one. So we learned some good information here. Let's pick a few directions we want to go deeper and let's put that announcement for the next survey out in the near future. Yeah, I mean, if you have a idea of what you need, for me, the questions that I have in here, like, I don't think the data is really going to change, to be honest. So for me, I personally don't need it. So but we can do another survey if you have some kind of learnings or if you want to actually get feedback on the topic. Yeah. So a little bit, I want to do that. I want to maybe start engaging on do the topics matter that much. I found by honestly, by and large, when I looked into that years ago, they didn't. Uh, our downloads were not affected by what the topic was by very much. People seem to listen to the show because they listen. And I'm of the opinion that it's sort of like a magazine that I'm the editor of. You know, I bring on stuff and people trust me to a certain point. Um, but I don't know, maybe people will say, hey, we want, how come there's no episodes about uh, Gaussian process? And then we'll go do that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I think the thing to think about when you're thinking about topics is, you know, whether you're just trying to maintain the number of listeners or if you're trying to grow. If you're trying to grow, then there needs to be some newsworthy topics, right? That will attract new listeners. Do we just want to attract new listeners? I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't refuse it, but we have a good listenership. What typically happens in a subscription model is as long as you're thinking about your existing listeners and your new listeners, since you said, you know, the topics of your current listeners doesn't seem to drive change that much, they seem relatively happy no matter what, then that means a little bit of a pivot to try to work on the prospecting would likely appeal to both the new people and the existing listeners. Yeah, or I could put people off. It's a delicate balance. But what you said is that your topic changes don't seem to put people off. Oh, I meant like if we change the show too much. Like what if I uh, start doing comic book reviews on here at the end? Well, I mean, we obviously have a mission statement, so we're going to stay true to that. Good point. Yeah. We are data skeptic. I mean, if you want to do a comic book review podcast, that's a different project. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, thank you so much for going through the numbers with me, Linda. I think this is interesting, and I suspect the listeners are going to like hearing it. All right. Well, thank you.